For Secretary of Health and Education Service, I nominate Javier Bacaria. Biden couldn't remember who the Health and Human Services Secretary is. And frankly, most of you probably can't either because we never see him. That's because it's Secretary Becerra, and he's been totally absent. Becerra has yet to attend a single White House COVID briefing. Think about it. He's Health and Human Services Secretary. He hasn't attended one White House briefing on this. He hasn't held a press conference on the matter, and it took him more than seven months to visit, visit the National Institutes of Health during a pandemic. So where is Secretary Becerra? He's like a COVID man of mystery. Joining me now is Florida Congresswoman Kat Kamek. Uh, thank you, Congresswoman, for joining us uh, from Florida. Uh, Congresswoman, where is this guy? He's the Secretary of Health and Human Services during a pandemic, and I never see him. Uh, Jason, first, thanks for having me. Good to see you. And uh, to your point, I don't know. This has definitely turned into a game of where's Waldo? No one seems to be able to find him on really any of the issues that he has full jurisdiction over. It could be COVID, which of course, as you just said, he has not even been to one of the major press conferences at the White House, which you would think that the Secretary of Health and Human Services would be a part of uh, when it came to the border issue, which HHS has a major role to play in the border because Border Patrol turns over all of the unaccompanied children over to HHS. A whole nother story. He hasn't been down there, nor has he been out front and center dealing with the opioid epidemic. So on the major issues, the major crises that we have been facing as Americans, the health and human, uh, the, the, the HHS secretary has been MIA. And when asked about this, I believe in a radio interview that a reporter was able to actually track him down, they asked, well, why aren't you at any of these major briefings? And why aren't you more front and center talking about this issue the same way that Secretary Azar was? And he said, it's, quote, not the profile that counts, it's the results. The results? Okay, yeah, well. we can talk about the results. There's been more people that have died yeah. under the Biden administration from COVID than under the Trump administration. We have mixed messaging uh, across the board. Uh, one minute, the, the president is saying that you're going to have a winter of death and destruction and fear and, and the mongering is all over the map. And then he says, don't panic. And yet we have an HHS secretary, Secretary Becerra, who has nothing to say and is nowhere to be found. It's very, very disturbing. And quite frankly, some people think he may be on his way out. Well, look, you're in the House, not in the Senate, so you didn't go through the confirmation process, but he no. barely squeaked by because he has yeah. no health and human services background. He's an attorney by trade. He was the California Attorney General. He has no background in this. So now all of a sudden, President Biden saying, whoops, I forgot to order the masks. Well, somebody's got to turn to somebody and say, whose job and role and responsibility? And you'd think the Health and Human Services Secretary would be somewhere in the room. But I, I mean, would who, do we, who are we supposed to turn to? Well, and you, you look at an agency like HHS and, and the vast uh, portfolio that they oversee, everything from CMS, Medicare, Medicaid. We saw under this Democratic House massive cuts to Medicare and Medicaid to pay for their social justice warrior programs. And then you get yeah. still no word out of out of the secretary on this. And again, with the border, no, no words to be said, even though there was outrage about the unaccompanied children and the treatment or lack thereof under this administration. And again, that's an HHS responsibility. Now they're talking yeah. about Biden's signature at home testing program. No contracts have been signed. Uh, there's not really been any details laid out. You would think that the secretary would be in charge of that. But something that I found interesting, Jason, was just a few weeks ago, he was asked, how are we going to plan for this? And he said, well, you know, we really ought to ask Congress for more money because we need to make sure that this is an issue that stays front and center for this administration. And we don't want to ask after the fact. Are you kidding me? Yeah, the well, the Biden administration is yeah. hell bent on pushing through this nearly five trillion dollar BBB build back broke 
plan that is nothing but Green New Deal and social justice yeah. warrior nonsense. And we have the secretary finally pop his head up and say, hey, we might need some money for COVID, when in reality, there's a lot that still has yet to be spent from all of these COVID packages. Well, and so you can yeah. start to see how this is going to end up happening come the first of the year. They're going to be asking Congress well, for listen, more money to run another yeah. program. Yes. And look, you're in the House. It's primarily primarily the role of the Senate to drag him up there and say, because they were the ones that yeah. confirmed him. How in the world is this doing this? Congresswoman, thank you and have a wonderful new year. Thanks for joining us.